Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, creating histogram as well as histogram equalization and then followed by image filtering. So here uh, I have the image Lina and then uh, the first thing I will do is convert it into grayscale and then I can use the command cv2 dot equalize hist. You know that histogram equalization is one of the most effective methods of enhancing the contrast of an image. So you can clearly um, make the histogram to be kind of uh, uniform instead of uh, a lot more in one kind of light intensity and a lot less in another light intensity. So uh, this is uh, this image that I'm going to show you. Also, I calculate the histogram itself using the command cb2.calchist. Then you need to pass to it the image. You need to pass to it if there you want a specific channels histogram. So if you say zero, zero means the first channel, and the first channel is blue. So here I'm asking for the blue channel color. Uh, the blue color channel and then if there is a mask you want to only look at the specific region of the image you can pass a mask here I don't have so I say none and then the number of bins so here I want 20 bins and then the range of the pixels to be counted for the histogram which I want the full range from 0 to 255 so I'm going to get the data of the histogram and then I use my um, matplotlib library or module to create a figure and then pass title x label y label i use the plot command with the data in the histogram i make sure my limit is only between 0 to 20 as i have 20 bins and then i show that plot right so here i can go ahead and show you the first part of this code which is basically as i said histogram equalization and the histogram so let's go ahead and show it this is the image this is the histogram, and you can see that for blue channel, the uh, basically range that you have is here in the mid range, a little bit below mid range, right? And uh, these are the uh, numbers that you have, right? You have about like 30,000 pixels for this mid range. Actually, it's better to show the horizontal axis between 0 to 255 instead of 0 to 20 because um, these are uh, 0 to 20 are the centers of the beans, right? The number of the beans, not the pixel intensity. So uh, if you want, you can show this horizontal axis a little bit better. And to do that, you have to either make an array where the numbers change from 0 to 255 with increments of uh, sufficient basically increment that makes the total number of bins 20. So uh, the best way to use it uh, to do is to use the np dot um, space command and then make sure that the number of bins is 20 and then use that as the horizontal axis or you can basically, since you have tons of pixels, you can say, hey, give me 256 bins, right? So for each value from 0 to 255, you can see there one bin. Here, your histogram is going to uh, have a little bit more wave in it, but it looks like the original one if I run that for you. Okay, so here you can see that's kind of the same as the original one, but here your uh, x-axis is more accurate. So you can see somewhere between like uh, probably um, 65, 70 to like 100. And so these are the maximum values that you have in the blue channel. And then you can, as I said, you can use any other channel that you want. And you can uh, show that channel as well over here. And then this is the picture for histogram equalization. As you can see, the image on the right, which is hist equal is much much better in terms of contrast compared to the left image here so it's absolutely worth it if you apply this before doing some operations it is going to make your image much much nicer and the other thing i wanted to show you is as you can see here i put both of these as one image and i show both of these two images as one image and show it how did i do that here 
I'm using the method called edge stack or horizontal stack from the NumPy. And then I combine my grayscale image and the histogram. I combine them. So here I'm doing concatenation. I'm combining them as one matrix, uh, horizontally stacking them together, and then show that as one single image, right? So instead of the subplots or something, that's another beautiful thing that I can do. The next thing I wanted to show you are, uh, the next things that I wanted to show you are filtering. So here I have an image, and for uh, the, the simplest thing that you can do is a convolution for filtering. So the uh, filter here I have is the Pruitt filter that is used for edge detection. And here the ones are all on one side, zero in the middle, negative on the other side. So this is going to uh, detect for me vertical edges. I have a video on edge detection under this playlist. You can go and watch it. And uh, in order to filter my image with this uh, kernel, I use the command CV2 filter 2D. I pass to it the source image. And then the depth of the output image, if I say negative one, that means the depth of the output image is the same as the input image. And then for kernel, I use this K that I defined over here. And then I'm going to show you the uh, basically filtered version of the image, right? So let me go ahead and show that to you. So if we pass this one and this one, Pass this, here we go. This is the image. And as you can see, the vertical edges are much brighter compared to anything else. That's why I'm using the private vertical edge detector. Okay, and this is a simple watt uh, convolution filtering that I can do. And then um, there are so many other things and filterings that I can do in OpenCV. One of them is the average filtering, which is the simple command CV2 blur. So I pass to it the image and then the size of the window, right? So here I'm asking for a 5x5 five five window and averaging inside that and assigning the center pixel to the average of the 5x5 five five window. Or instead of simple averaging, I can do Gaussian averaging or Gaussian blur where the weights of those Gaussian uh, uh, pixels within the kernel are multiplied by the pixel values and then uh, basically add uh, is replaced for the average uh, pixel added together and replaced. And here my kernel size again is 5 by 5 and I have a standard deviation for the Gaussian function with a sigma of 2. So I can use the Gaussian blur versus a regular blur. Gaussian blur is typically better than an average blur. And uh, these two, I can uh, basically apply them as a, a, a convolution. Okay, so these two I can apply with a simple watt convolution. If I define a kernel for average and if I define a kernel for Gaussian, I can do a simple convolution, which is a linear operation. Now here, the median blur is a nonlinear filtering. So here, the median of the window, which is five by five here, the median of that window is gonna be assigned to the center pixel. And median, as you know, is a nonlinear operation. So median filtering, you cannot do it with the convolution. It's a what? I said this is a nonlinear filter. And median filtering is very, very good for reducing noise. Especially if the noise is called salt and pepper noise, which is typically created in images due to uh, thermal issues or thermal in the background, the temperature uh, effects of the background. This uh, median uh, blurring is going to reduce that salt and pepper noise very beautifully. So these are all of those blurred uh, version of the image. And then there is something called the bilateral filter, which is one of my favorite filters. This guy not only will reduce the noise in the image, on the other hand, it also preserves the edges. Because when you do apply a blur, the edges will, the edges are sharp changes in the intensities, abrupt changes in the intensities. So they will be smoothened out but this guy here, this bilateral filter, 
not only it takes advantage of basically uh, color, it also takes advantage of the location. So it's like a Gaussian over location multiplied by a Gaussian over color or light intensity. And since it applies both of them, it makes basically the edges preserved and it is going to reduce the other parts that are noisy. And so this is the type of filter that you want to use if you really want sharp edges and at the same time uh, reduce noise. The parameters to pass to it is the input image, then the diameter of the neighborhood, right? The pixel, uh, the neighborhood is 5 by 5 here. Then a sigma for the color filter Gaussian, and then a sigma for the space Gaussian. And here I'm using like 21 and 21 and 5 by 5. And I can show you a bilateral filter as well. So let me go ahead and run this so you can see all of these different filters. And here I put them all side by side so you can see. So this is the average filter. You see the blur in the image. This is the Gaussian filter. Again, there is the blur in the image. A little bit better than the average. If you zoom in, you can see here the uh, pixelation is not as bad as here. And then you have the median filter, which does not blur as much as this. And it is going to remove the noise in the background if there is any. So here I don't have a ton of salt and pepper noise. So uh, you don't see a huge difference, uh, except for this is a little bit sharper than those two. And then you see the beautiful bilateral uh, filter, which not only preserves all of these details that are blurred in these other images, also, the background is also very nice and smooth. So this is literally the best filter that I always prefer to use. So uh, hopefully you learn some basic filtering using the linear filters, nonlinear filter, uh, bilateral one, and then which is like a 2D version of a Gaussian, the histogram, the histogram equalization, and uh, this is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in my next video.